Hey everyone, Chalmix here. I have a confession to make, and it's gonna be really hard for me to admit, so just bear with me for like a few seconds. Sonic Colors is really fun. Sonic Colors is really fun. There, I said it. Are you happy? Look, Sonic Colors, especially when it originally came out in 2010, was never my cup of tea. In fact, it was like the complete opposite of my cup of tea. It shifted the overall tone of the games to be much more kid-friendly, it had insufferable dialogue between characters, it took away some of my favorite Sonic voice actors, it introduced the Wisps. Yeah, I'm the guy that's known for drawing this picture, which, by the way, totally got referenced in Rise of the Wisps. Hey, Sega, maybe this means you're listening, so like, uh, can you bring back the Chow Garden, please? Thank you. I've expressed a lot of not-so-positive feelings about Sonic Colors here on this channel across several videos. But I've been playing through Sonic Colors Ultimate, and I gotta say, my opinion on the game has definitely changed. But there's kind of a catch, it's not all for the better. Sonic Colors Ultimate makes me feel weird. Everything about it just has me super conflicted. On one hand, I've kind of seen the light and have a newfound appreciation for the gameplay. But on the other hand, Sonic Colors Ultimate may not be the ultimate version of this game that it wants you to think it is. There are weird negatives. Like, a lot of weird negatives. Like usual, I have way too much to say about our favorite talking blue rat and his new video game, so let's talk about it. I grabbed a bite at the bucket of sushi. What's the verdict? His cruelty knows no bounds. Oh, Tails, why would you be eating Eggman Sushi when you could be getting premium, authentic Japanese snacks from today's sponsor, Boxu? Boxu is a premium subscription snack box that delivers unique assortments of Japanese treats. You'll find a different themed box for each month, so the snacks are always changing. Not only do you receive some delicious snacks, which, by the way, are perfect for sharing amongst friends and family, but you'll also experience a custom-made taste through Japan, simply by eating these foods, some with 100 plus years of history. These boxes are delivered straight to your door from Japan, and have free shipping to the US. My favorite part about Boxu, besides the food obviously, is that you get this wonderful little booklet that explains the flavors and origins of each snack included for that month. My personal favorite snack from this month's box had to have been this stick potato Supa Mucho Plum. Trust me, it was so good. I was snacking the entire time I was editing this video and I already can't wait to get next month's box. Use code CHOWMIX with the link in my description to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese box subscription from Boxu. You definitely won't want to miss out on this amazing, fun-sized taste of Japan, so order yours today. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this video, and with all that being said, let's get on to reviewing Sonic Colors Ultimate. Let's start this video off on a positive note. Playing Sonic Colors Ultimate granted me a new appreciation for the game. The level design, the controls, the sense of speed, it all really clicked with me this time around. This is the first time I truly had a ton of fun with this game. Something about this playthrough had me really motivated to keep playing through not only the entire main game, but I also went on to collect all the red rings, unlock Super Sonic, and I'm currently trying to S-rank each level. At this point, it's looking like I'm gonna be 100%ing this game. This is in complete contrast to how I felt playing the original game on the Wii. For whatever reason, it felt like a big chore, and like I had to force myself just to progress through the main story. Maybe it's purely the hype of a new Sonic game, or maybe it's one of several improvements made to Ultimate that finally did it for me. I'm not entirely sure, but what I do know is that this game does in fact improve upon the original in many ways. But don't get me wrong, like I mentioned earlier, it does also regress from the original in many ways, which we'll be getting into as well. The most obvious improvements come from this game's frame rate and resolution. The original Sonic Colors came out on the Wii in a glorious 480p and a buttery smooth 30fps. Glorious and buttery. Ultimate, on the other hand, brings Sonic Colors into high definition. You can practically see every pore on Sonic's oily snout. This game is also able to be played in 4K resolutions and 60fps on certain consoles. On PC, which is what I've been playing on, I was even able to get up to 144 frames per second. And I may be wrong about this, so feel free to correct me in the comments below, but the controls feel absolutely amazing, and I think it's at least partly because of this increased frame rate. With double the frame rate, you have double the amount of frames for the game to read your inputs. 
and this makes the game feel overall more responsive. The controls may also have been tweaked slightly on top of this, but whatever they did, it just makes everything feel so much more snappy. Sonic can actually run around in a complete tight circle at lower speeds, which is really impressive for a boost game. Going back to frame rate, the Nintendo Switch though, yikes. The game is capped at 30 frames per second, so no improvement over the Wii version in this regard here. Come on guys, this is a Wii game, and I'm almost positive the Switch should be able to handle it. It runs much more seemingly intensive games at 60fps pretty decently, so I'm convinced this is an optimization issue on the developer's part. The Switch version of Ultimate being a bit sussy is going to be a reoccurring theme throughout this entire video, so just keep this in mind. The other most obvious improvement is the lighting. Or maybe change is a better word. Because whether the lighting is an improvement or not, it kind of depends on who you ask. I'd say the game generally looks nicer with the new lighting, but it's still really hit or miss in a lot of ways. Some environments are absolutely breathtaking, like Planet Wisp and Aquarium Park with their incredibly intricate and deep backgrounds. The upped resolution makes everything look crisp and the lighting really helps the backgrounds pop. But other environments are much more dimly lit compared to the original game, and especially on the Switch, it sometimes looks like Eggman forgot to pay the electricity bill and they had to cut the power to the entire theme park. It also seems like the bloom and blur effects are cranked up a little too high. When boosting, it can sometimes be impossible to tell what's ahead of you because of the severity of this blur effect. It's actually really distracting. They really did miss the mark with the lighting on some of the most important things like, I don't know, Sonic himself? Sonic looks absolutely terrible in this game. He somehow had the opposite of a glow up, but also a literal glow up at the same time. He's like a fluorescent light with his bright blue fur and pale skin tone. His facial animations are also half broken. His pupils are completely static and they're supposed to be moving like in the original. And the worst part in my opinion? God, this is gonna sound like the biggest nitpick ever. His eyelids clip through his brow and I cannot stand it. You can see for yourself nice and up close in the customization screen, which by the way, you'll notice when navigating through it that it lags for like a good two seconds whenever you scroll. For some reason, you can see Sonic's blinking animation here in slow motion, and not only is this a weird bug, it's also disgusting. It looks like his eyelids got stung by a bunch of bees like in Animal Crossing or something. The only saving grace to this weird looking Sonic is the fact that you're able to customize him with some wacky patterns. I actually really love this feature, although being a bit bare bones. At most, you're slapping on some alternative textures on Sonic's gloves or shoes. It isn't on the same level as Sonic Forces, where you can give characters entire outfits, but it's a nice step in the right direction of character customization in Sonic games I want to see going forward. As much as I dislike Forces, I would love to see the customization from that game come back. Not necessarily for an avatar character though, no, I'd love to be able to deck Sonic himself out with a ton of crazy accessories. Give me those good, good soap shoes, come on man. Besides the reskins, you also have some pretty cool aura effects that you can attach to Sonic. By far, the coolest one has gotta be the movie Sonic effect. You get cool glowing blue eyes and quills, and it's a lot more eccentric than the rest of the effects by quite a lot. But you can only get this if you purchase the digital deluxe edition of this game. My second favorite effect, this cool edgelord darkness aura, comes from finishing all of the rival rush stages, which are intense one-on-one -on -one races against Sonic's greatest rival. Sonic's other greatest rival. Sonic's other, other greatest rival. Metal Sonic. Yeah, that's him. These races are pretty decent challenges. Although personally I was able to win these on my first or worst case second try, so I guess I'm just a god gamer, what can I say? Metal Sonic was really on my ass almost the entire time. Dude is absolutely relentless. I've also seen some friends online talking about how they were struggling to win these races. But overall I really enjoyed the rival rush stages, just wish that there were more of them. There's only one per zone and a few of them are on these really short acts that can be beaten in like a single minute but it's a nice little addition that added an extra 30 minutes or so of playtime to my playthrough. And it's always nice to see my boy Metal Sonic come back, although I do wish he had more of a purpose for being here. I guess that's kind of what Rise of the Wisps was trying to explain, but even considering what happens in its story, it still doesn't really make sense why you're racing him once per zone. To be fair though, I don't really care about Sonic Colors' story and continuity. What matters the most is that the gameplay for the Rival Rush is incredibly fun. 
Anyways, speaking of challenge, Sonic Colors Ultimate opted to get rid of the life system. Honestly, not a horrible change in itself, as I do feel like the life system is a bit outdated, kind of padding out the length of the game somewhat artificially. But then again, having a limited amount of attempts at a level before getting a game over does add challenge and is there to make sure that you're good enough at the game before continuing on to an expectedly harder later stage. What they probably should have done is gone the Crash 4 route, where you can choose between two systems, one having lives and one not having lives. It lets the player choose how difficult they want the game to be, instead of alienating players who do want more of a challenge. Actually, there's a couple other changes I wish were optional. The first one is the tail save system. Instead of collecting extra lives, you get tail save items which summon tails to come and pull you back up after falling down certain bottomless pits. It's a neat feature that's definitely saved my ass, but I have two issues with it. First, the animation takes forever. It almost feels like I could have died and boosted back to that point in the same amount of time it took for Tails to drop me back in. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it does seriously feel like eternity. Second, the feature isn't optional, which not only limits the challenge yet again, but also actively puts you at a disadvantage in certain situations. For example, I was red ring hunting and I knew for a fact that I passed up a red ring. I wasn't able to easily turn around and go back, so I wanted to jump off an edge to respawn back to my last checkpoint, which would have been before this red ring. But no, this little f***er comes and pulls me back up, putting me right back in the same exact place that I jumped down from. What the hell, man? Now, instead of being able to conveniently go back by respawning, I had to restart the entire level from the beginning. This happened quite a bit actually during my red ring expedition, and it ended up wasting way more time than you'd think. And these tail save items are incredibly abundant, I had like 50 of them by the end of the game. Burning through them all just to get the gameplay mechanic to stop would have taken at least a half hour. I would go as far as to say that the tail save inconvenienced me more than it helped me. The main issue I have with the new life system and the tail save is that they aren't optional. The thing about the original Sonic Colors on the Wii is that it was kind of already a decently easy game. Sure, there were certain sections that made me pretty frustrated after failing over and over because they were pretty difficult, but they were admittedly towards the end of the game, and that's to be expected. But man, Sonic Colors Ultimate opted to make the game even easier, which is kind of worrying. I've had this underlying fear for the past, I don't know, 10 years of Sonic games that they've been aiming for younger and younger audiences each time. You can see it from the reduced challenge and even the tone of the story and the writing for each of these games. Sonic seems to be losing a lot of his universal appeal, the fact that he was able to be enjoyed by anyone of any age. And Sonic Colors was already very obviously aimed at a younger demographic. This decision to get rid of lives and force tail save on everyone without choice is essentially them doubling down on this idea, which is worrying. I hope I'm wrong and maybe they're just using Sonic Colors Ultimate as the ultimate gateway for new Sonic fans to get into the series, especially right after the success of the Sonic movie. The movie Sonic pre-order bonuses are kind of the writing on the wall for that. But the reduced challenge and even the fact that they decided to remaster Colors of all games, the game with one of the most kid-friendly tones of the entire series, has me a bit concerned about the direction of future games. Is this a sign that future games will be super kid-friendly and lacking in challenge? Because if so, it's going to deter a lot of us longtime fans away from the series, as well as newcomers who are looking for a rewarding and challenging game. It's possible for Sonic games to appeal to everyone, you just gotta find a nice middle ground with the story and challenge for these games. The series used to be good at doing this, especially towards the beginning. It's only been recently where they've started to alienate its most passionate fans, and it really sucks. Alright, tangent over. Anyways, circling back to the non-optional changes, we also have the newly added remixes. These tracks play in the first three acts of each zone, so they're kind of like part of your first impression when entering a new zone. The issue is that a lot of these remixes are weaker than their original counterparts. I'll admit that there's a lot of them that absolutely slap, but some of them really are just watered down versions of original tracks. Again, these remixes should have been optional or maybe at the least put in the final three acts of each zone rather than the first three. The later acts tend to be the shorter, more minigame-like stages, so I think it would have been more fitting to put them there instead. But nonetheless, the original music still is in the game in some capacity, and while Colors doesn't have my absolute favorite soundtrack of the series, it's still all really good music. In terms of pure, newly added gameplay mechanics for Sonic himself, there isn't really anything too different from the original. Sonic plays almost exactly like how he did on the Wii. 
You got your jumps, your boosts, your stomps, the dedicated alien button. One thing that I'm very thankful for that they added is the button remapping. Because for whatever reason, the boost and stomp buttons were switched from what they normally are in the other boost games. Gotta say, not very ergonomic, so luckily you can change all of this to whatever you'd like. The only notable addition to Sonic's gameplay is the perfect homing attack, and it's kind of genius. When you become lined up for a successful homing attack, you can time your button press within a specific sweet spot to perform a perfect homing attack. All it does is grant you a little bit of boost meter, but it goes a long way, especially when chaining perfect homing attacks consecutively. One of my issues with the original game is I felt like earning boost was a lot more limited compared to the other boost games. You would never get meter after defeating enemies, collecting rings, or doing tricks. You basically only got it from the White Wisps. So having the perfect homing attack here really helps to remedy this problem, even if only a little bit. One thing that's unfortunate is that this game had the perfect opportunity to make it so that you can do quick steps and drifting in any section, like some of the other boost games let you do, but they didn't take it. Not the end of the world, but having access to Sonic's entire moveset at all times would have been nice. I guess since we're talking about missed opportunities, we might as well bring up the blatant downgrades this game introduces. The first one is the lack of multiple save files. The Wii version of this game lets you run through the game multiple times without ever having to worry about completely deleting your save file, you just boot up a new save. Say I want to do a playthrough from the beginning in Ultimate, well, hope you weren't too attached to your previous save file. Yeah, you have to delete your current save file just to start a new game. Another thing that kinda blows are the cutscenes. Cutscenes in the Wii version were pre-rendered, and you really weren't able to tell when playing on actual hardware because the game was only in standard definition. The thing is, in Ultimate, they simply take those standard definition cutscenes and upscale them with AI. Which could have been okay, but they look like absolute garbage here. Everything has a faint, transparent outline around it, and all of the detail is completely lost if the character is placed even remotely in the background. The cutscenes can also be pretty jarring because they use the original game's lighting, so you got fluorescent light Sonic in-game, but then normal looking Sonic in cutscenes. Data miners found that the raw animations do exist within the game's file, so why they couldn't re-render those cutscenes or even play them in real time is beyond me. I'm sure it's a lot harder to do than it sounds, but man, it would have made such a big difference. Another issue I have with Ultimate, which is kind of minor, is the UI, specifically the font choices and the graphic design for certain things. Just look at this mobile game looking prompt for the Rival Rush stages. Hell, this looks like an advertisement you'd find on a sketchy website. The final issue I want to bring up are the constant framerate stutters. Now, because I'm playing on PC, I especially feel like not everyone will have the same experience as I did. I have a pretty damn powerful PC, with an RTX 2070 Super and a Ryzen 7 2700X. In layman's terms, it's a pretty damn good build. At the very least, it should be able to run an upscaled Wii game no problem. But it really doesn't, there's a ton of hiccups. I especially noticed the stuttering when first entering a stage, maybe because certain assets were still being loaded. If I restarted the stage, the stuttering reduced significantly because I guess the level was more loaded in at that point but I'd occasionally get stuttering during normal gameplay as well, so I'm not really sure what the issue is. I have this game saved on my SSD, so loading things should be no problem. I think what it is is that the PC version of Ultimate just isn't optimized. It sucks because the last thing you need when you're boosting through stages at sonic speeds trying to react to obstacles is for the game to have a hiccup and throw off your timing. Thus far, my complaints have been nitpicky at best, but I've kind of been saving the worst for last. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This game launched in a very rough state. Colors Ultimate has a ton of bugs and glitches that the original just didn't have. You got things like game crashes. Then you have things like horrible audio mixing, where the sound pans left and right for no apparent reason, or sound effects and music just completely stopping. You also have save file corruption. I know multiple people that have had their save files corrupted and had to restart their game from the beginning. There's a huge compilation of a lot of these bugs over on Twip's channel, so go check that out if you want to get a taste of how broken this game can be. But to my horror, these glitches are only the tip of the iceberg. Many people have taken to Twitter to post some of their findings. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but there is one glitch that is so insane, I would go as far as to say that it's actually physically harmful. Like, if you have epilepsy or are sensitive to bright flashing lights, maybe skip ahead to this timestamp because this glitch involves a lot of insane jittery visuals. And just to be safe, I'm gonna have the footage really zoomed out so it isn't overwhelming. This glitch has been dubbed by fans as the seizure glitch. I'm sure you can probably tell why. 
And yes, it's been proven that this glitch can be performed on actual hardware, granted only on the Switch version of this game. If you remember what I mentioned earlier in this video, the Switch version of this game is overall a bit more sketchy than any of the other platforms. It has the most issues out of any other version of this game by far. The light at the end of this tunnel though is that a patch has been confirmed to be in the works, which will presumably fix a lot of these issues. But we really don't know for sure if this patch will remedy everything. There's evidently a lot of work to do still, which has me question how this game even released in the first place. Everything points to the fact that this game was extremely rushed, presumably by Sega. And what sucks the most is we recently heard from Sega that they were willing to put more time into Sonic games to ensure quality. Literally the first game to release after this statement was made, you can't make this up. Now you can make the argument that maybe they were talking about Sonic games solely developed by Sonic Team that they wanted to take their time on, because Sonic Colors Ultimate was outsourced to a company called Blind Squirrel Games. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who is developing for Sonic. If the game comes out rushed, that's bad for Sonic's reputation no matter what. Sonic has been on thin ice for the past 15 years. This series can't afford this kind of oversight. The truth is, I really don't think this game was ready to be released. And Sega letting this game release in the way that it was really makes me question their goodwill in regards to their recent promises. But despite all of these glitches, and trust me, it's really hard to go a few levels without experiencing some type of glitch, even if minor, this game reviewed really well among big name reviewers. Don't get me wrong, this is a great thing, but it seems so bizarre to me because this game is like the perfect low hanging fruit that these guys usually go for, but they didn't. Keep in mind, Sonic is usually a ginormous blue punching bag for these big journalists. I almost feel like there's some kind of conspiracy going on. Put on your tinfoil hats, everyone! There seems to be a huge disparity between the reception of Sonic Colors Ultimate amongst game journalists and fans. Well, why is that? It's because Sonic Colors was made for game journalists in the first place. Let me explain. First, you have to understand that your average game journalist usually isn't that invested with the Sonic series as a whole. In fact, they kinda live for kicking it while it's down. It's easy clicks because who doesn't want to see one of gaming's greatest icons go down in a fiery blaze? The scariest part is that these are all the people with the loudest voices that Sega seems to be listening to. And Sonic Colors is the complete culmination of all of these big game reviewers who don't exactly know what they're talking about, gaslighting Sega into thinking 3D Sonic has always been bad. 3D Sonic, am I right? It's glitchy, it's gimmicky, has way too many characters, has terrible stories, it's too edgy, the list goes on and on. While some of these points they make aren't completely incorrect, there's usually no constructive criticism or compromise with these types of comments. It's just black and white to them, nothing but shallow insults from people who don't genuinely care what happens with these games. Because they aren't in it with Sonic for the long run, they couldn't care less about how they word their complaints or how it affects the series going forward. All of this resulted in Sonic Colors, and the beginning of the meta era as a whole. Look, I'll finally admit, Sonic Colors is a fun game, but I will never concede that it had a good story, writing, or dialogue. These reviewers got what they wanted for the past 10 years with the meta era, and are content with Sonic and Friends being these hollow versions of what they used to be. But meanwhile, most of us that actually care for the series are left to suffer the consequences. So why did these reviewers rate Sonic Colors Ultimate so well despite all of its issues? Well, I think it really helped that this game is a remaster of a well-received game that came out on the Wii in 2010. It's already common knowledge that Colors on the Wii was a solid title. And especially because the original gave them everything they wanted out of the series, I'm sure they basically assumed that this remaster was essentially that game, but upscaled. I'm not saying that these reviewers didn't play the game for themselves, but I think there's probably a bit of ignorance going on in these reviews. At the very least, Sonic Colors Ultimate isn't one of those Sonic games with a melodramatic plot, tons of characters, and weird gimmicks, right? The lack of those aspects are latched onto so much by these big name reviewers that it completely distracts them from a lot of the other potential negatives. But that's just my crazy conspiracy theory. On the other hand, you have the diehard Sonic fans voicing their opinions online. This is where the review disparity really shows itself. While this game reviewed really well among these big name reviewers, fans were a lot more riled up about the state of this game. Ever since this game was revealed during the Sonic Central livestream back in May of 2021, fans have been debating whether or not this game really is an upgrade over the original. The lighting, the animations, the non-optional easy mode, it all sparked these huge explosive debates and controversies that popped up every other week. It has been absolutely exhausting. 
I'm not gonna lie and say I was never part of these conversations, because I totally was. But at a certain point, I decided to stop participating in these debates because they usually ended up going nowhere. I was an avid believer that criticism surrounding this game was totally justified from what we've been shown. But then you get other people who would see this kind of criticism as attacks and would defend this game at literally every turn. First, it was, oh, they only just announced the game, so the footage is really early, we can't completely judge it yet. Then the game would go on to get more and more trailers, and then it was, oh, well, they still have time before the release to fix a lot of these issues, so we can't completely judge it yet. Then, even when the game was released, it was, oh, they'll patch it out, we can't completely judge it yet. It is true that final judgment should be saved for when the game actually releases, but surprise, the game is out now, and I'm giving my judgment. And to no one's surprise, a lot of people's concerns have come true. Sure, you do have a lot of people that'll bash this game no matter what, but I think a lot of this criticism does truly come from a place of love. We don't want a bad Sonic game, and voicing our opinions is the best way to tell Sega what we actually want. And this holds true even now, with the game officially being released. All I have to say is that this game has been quite exhausting. Everything about this game has been a constant war between the people unreasonably bashing everything about it, and the other people being toxically positive, taking any form of criticism as a personal attack. At the end of the day, Sonic Colors Ultimate is mostly an improvement over the original. Mostly. I am pretty hopeful that most of these bigger technical issues will be fixed eventually, but I can't guarantee this. As it stands now, I'm a little hesitant to completely recommend this game to people. Maybe wait a few months and see if these issues get patched out. The original game still is out there and even easily accessible via emulation, with arguably better visuals. But you'll definitely be missing out on some of the improvements Ultimate makes over the original as I think they are worth checking out. And this is all on top of the accessibility this game gives by being on current hardware. Sonic Colors Ultimate, at the very least, got me to appreciate a game that I otherwise wasn't too into. As much as I've been talking about glitches and downgrades, the core gameplay is what matters the most and I've now seen that it is extremely wonderful. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more content similar to this. In the comments below, let me know what you think about Sonic Colors Ultimate. Is it better than the original? And to take that discussion even further, make sure to join our community discord, I'll leave the link to that in the description. And last but not least, I gotta give a big shout out to my channel members. You all are my number one motivators and I am so thankful for your support. If you'd also like to become a channel member for only $2 along with getting some pretty awesome perks, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.